What's true for color is also true for complex perceptions of motion. So here we have, let's turn this around, a diamond. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it here, and I'm going to spin it. And for all of you, you'll see it probably spinning this direction. Now, I want you to keep looking at it. Move your eyes around, blink, maybe close one eye, and suddenly it'll flip and start spinning the opposite direction. Yes? Raise your hand if you got that. Yes? Keep blinking. Every time you blink, it'll switch. Right? So I can ask you, which direction is it rotating? How do you know? Your brain doesn't know, because both are equally likely. So depending on where it looks, it flips between the two possibilities. Are we the only ones that see illusions? The answer to this question is no. Even the beautiful bumblebee, with its mere one million brain cells, which is 250 times fewer cells than you have one retina, sees illusions. Does the most complicated things that even our most sophisticated computers can't do. So in my lab, we of course work on bumblebees because we can completely control their experience and see how that alters the architecture of their brain. And we do this in what we call the bee matrix. And here you have the hive. You can see the queen bee, that large bee in the middle there. Those are all her daughters, the eggs. And they go back and forth between this hive and the arena by this tube. And you'll see one of the bees come out here. You see she has a little number on her? Yeah, there's another one coming out. She also has a number on her. Now, they're not born that way, right? <laughs> we pull them out, put them in the fridge, and they fall asleep. And then you can super glue little numbers on them, right? <laughs> And now, in this experiment, they get a reward if they go to the blue flowers. Okay? And they land on the flower, they stick their tongue in there, called a proboscis, and they drink sugar water. Now, she's drinking a glass of water that's about that big to you and I. We'll do that about three times and then fly. Right? And sometimes they learn not to go to the blue, but to go to where the other bees go. So they copy each other. They can count to five, they can recognize faces. And here she comes down the ladder, and she'll come into the hive, find an empty honey pot, and throw up. And that's honey. Okay? <laughs> now remember, <laughs> she's supposed to be going to the blue flowers, but what are these bees doing in the upper right corner? It looks like they're going to green flowers. Now, are they getting it wrong? And the answer to the question is no. Those are actually blue flowers, but those are blue flowers under green light. So they're using the relationships between the colors to solve the puzzle, which is exactly what we do. So illusions are often used, especially in art, by, in the words of a more contemporary artist, to demonstrate the fragility of our senses. OK, this is complete rubbish. OK, the senses aren't fragile. If they were, we wouldn't be here. OK, instead, color tells us something completely different, that the brain didn't actually evolve to see the world the way it is. We can't. Instead, the brain evolved to see the world the way it was useful to see in the past. And how we see is by continually redefining normality. So how can we take this incredible capacity of, of plasticity of the brain and get people to experience their world differently? Well, one of the ways we do in my lab and studio is we translate the light into sound, and we enable people to hear their visual world. Okay? And they can navigate the world using their ears. Here is David in the right, and he's holding a camera. On the left is what his camera sees. And you'll see there's a line, a faint line going across that image. That line is broken up in 32 squares. And each square, we calculate the average color, and then we just simply translate that into sound. And now he's going to turn around, close his eyes, and find a plate on the ground with his eyes closed. He finds it. Amazing, right? So not only can we create a prosthetic for the visually impaired, but we can also investigate how people literally make sense of the world. But we can also do something else. We can also make music with color. So working with kids, they created images, thinking about what might the images you see sound like if we could listen to them. And then we translated these images. And this is one of those images. And this is a six-year-old child composing a piece of music for a 32-piece orchestra. And this is what it sounds like.
So a six-year-old child, okay? Now, what does all this mean? What this suggests is that no one is an outside observer of nature, okay? We're not defined by our essential properties, by the bits that make us up. We're defined by our environment and our interaction with that environment, by our ecology. And that ecology is necessarily relative, historical, and empirical, right? So what I'd like to finish with is this over here, because what I've been trying to do is really celebrate uncertainty, because I think only through uncertainty is there potential for understanding. So if some of you are still feeling a bit too certain, I'd like to do this one. So if we have the lights down, and what we have here, can everyone see 25 purple surfaces on your left and 25, call it yellowish surfaces, on your right? So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the middle nine surfaces here under yellow illumination by simply putting a filter behind them. All right? Now you can see that changes the light that's coming through there, right? Because now the light's going through a yellowish filter and then a purplish filter. And I'm going to do this opposite on the left here. I'm going to put the middle nine under a purplish light, okay? Now, some of you will have noticed that the consequence is that the light coming through those middle nine on the right, or your left, is exactly the same as the light coming through the middle nine on your right. Agreed? Yes? Okay, so they are physically the same. Let's pull the covers off. Now remember, you know that the middle nine are exactly the same. Do they look the same? No. Question is, is that an illusion? And I'll leave you with that. So thank you very much. <laughs>